Today we will discuss uh, a deeper aspects of three uh, very sacred chakras. The what is a chakra then? Chakra is a vortex or a vortex of energy. It is basically spinning in a very rapid movement and sustaining the glandular energy in the biological concept of it. But the most important aspect of it, it is a portal of trans receiving, transmitting and receiving. The first aspect, unless we receive fully, we cannot transmit. Our transmissions are pretty weak. The biophotonic transmissions of a human is very negligible. So what really comes out of it is very weak and cannot be glorified. So let us access very simple point known as the Trikuti, Drikuti and Brikuti. The discussion would be how we can access these three which is very crucial for our state of being. Most often than not, the frontal lobe has a significant robe role in our state of being. Why? Is that the most of this frontal lobe is involved in the ego self mode, which is individuated mode. And if we are operating in an individuated mode, it's because we are always outward. We are always trying to grasp from out to in. When we don't know because anything else, because there's nothing happening inside, we don't have an experience of what's happening inside. Somebody who has never experienced a spin of energy here would always laugh at the whole science of spiritual journey. They would say there's nothing as unless then what comes first surrender or experience. So unless we experience this, we will not be able to access the inner knowing. So deep down inside, beyond the biological understanding happens the subtle awareness. The, the eyebrows meet and at this point, is a very powerful concentration point known as brukuti, bru, bru, the word bru. The word bru stands for the eyebrow. And this eyebrow meeting point is also, you see, we always frown from here when we are looking at a bright object or when we are in deep concentration. So that means this brukuti would lead us to the inner knowing because we are going through a process from objective awareness to subjective awareness. When we click in within you, there is a deeper knowing and that deeper knowing is possible through a smaller gateway known as Drukuti. Right above the Drukuti is Drukuti and that Drukuti is like a powerful process of grasping. There is a dhara, the flow of prana, passing from the sun into us. And drukuti is a grasping point. And that grasping point is, it is the subtle energy passes through the nadis and enters into the sushumna only when the sushumna is open. Otherwise, it would just pass through the ida pingala nadi. So, what's important here? Drukuti is concentration and when you are in the drukuti you can actually watch the flow of the prana passing through you grasping through you and the above it is the merger of this into confluence where the ida pingala nadis meet and this meeting point is known as trikuti so what happens the kuta means actually coming together gathering a confluence. When these three rivers, the Ganga, Yamuna, Saraswati as spiritually called, but then the real aspect of this is the Ida, Pingala and Sushumna, when they merge at the Trikuti point, we are able to witness the confluence and the confluence of it is magnetizing us upward. So if you watch the channels that is happening inside you, the Trikuti awakens the inner Guru. And that this Guru Chakra becomes the Trikuti point. And that Guru Chakra, when you can feel it as a fire pit, it is on, it is 
powerfully igniting us to the innermost core fire and that fire when it comes alive nothing else becomes important you are one with the light within because the, this eventually is the fire of the guru tattva and when it rises and merges into this tattvic gnana you start understanding that the bhutagni tapogni chitagni these three fires converge here and you can access the guru tattva and trikuti becomes the symbolical journey of any being a sadhaka on the path has to encounter the guru within it might not be in a physical form it might not be even even in an astral form it is in the form of light and the light itself is the guru and that light would pull us up back into the source by the channeled light of the pillar of jyotirlinga the light pillar and that eventually becomes the passage the highway for us to access the higher abodes of our existence where our fragmented self is available to us in a form of higher self so this is the path of this ascension process eventually we have to encounter the inner eye known as chakshu opens the gateway to the seventh eye known as pundari kaksha and that when it opens you can see in the the nebula the dying star you can see it as a big eye known as the god's eye the same eye which is also here is looking into the cosmos and sending a signal so all these are interconnected this yogic science is mystical it's exciting it's beautiful it is fascinating because it gives you the innermost idea of what can happen when you can excite this stimulate this and dwell in it live in it because it does not happen overnight it's a casual glam, a glimpse of it or a glance of it it happens with eventual meditative awareness penance on it so a tip, typical state would be the tongue would be on the roof of the mouth the eyes should be rolled up and the awareness would be on the awareness you practice it awareness and you experience the passage of light and that passage of light would lead us to the eternal first light known as pratikasham so pratikasham iti pratyaksham that is possible through channeled awareness and this is also known as urdhva pundra if you see many vaishnavites in india they wear a, a red color tilak here and the tilak is having a cap once that cap is broken this cap is known as itaralinga when that cap is op- broken open by kundalini force known as kandarpa vayu and this gateway open then the whole pillar of light is available to us and that is the science of yogis it is the path of fire and light in the light eventually merges with the arul perum jyoti the great vast light through a ray of compassion known as tanai perum karunai that means it is we invoke that by deserving levels and the master ray flows through and the whole brain becomes lit by this magnificence and the brukuti trikuti and drikuti all three of them merge and there is light passing through even in daylight you can actually watch a light on your head that means the fully shining light which is not diffused by the limitedness of the ego self sparks itself throbs and you can experience the spectacular spin of the universal light passing through you then the whole brain becomes a huge drum of musical celebration you can watch the you can hear the divine sounds of the damaru of the bells of the tremendous eventually the omkara the brahmari sound the brahmari nada you can hear the whole universe spinning inside you all these are the portals of higher existential journey from ordinary state to a super charged super knowing state eventually is awakens the gateway passes through indu chakra and reaches the nirvana chakra and this liberates us from the limitedness and we access what is the true state of a jivan mukta the ability to access the unfailing glory of being free antaryami to travel into the higher domains of light and it is possible through accessing the nirvana so eventually the states of samadhi is sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi so 
this the highest state of samadhi is that and when you watch from here the whole universal light passing through the projection passing through this imagery fails to be appearing as it is shown right now it will see this as just a pure spark of light passing through and then the the beam of light passing from the sun so we are passing through that and this pillar of light reveals itself many beautiful glorious original receptive stories and not the perception that we have imagined ourselves to be